Hello, welcome to Down the Rabbit Hole podcast with me, your host, Matty T, and I'm joined by the ever-present Aaron Young. How are we? Doing good. Good being back at, at it. Back at it again. Mm-hmm. Um, how you been? Been fine. Just been working away. You've got, got a new job, didn't you? Yeah. Yes, yes, working at the cinema, getting that cash. Getting that cash. Getting that free tickets. Exactly. Yeah. We've, we've seen it, we've seen it, we've used that a couple of times. We've a used couple of times, yeah. For the Joker. Joker and Doctor Sleep. Doctor Sleep, Joke, both great films, by the way. I can't oh, yeah. recommend them highly enough. I, I think Joker probably is a bit better. Mm, I disagree with that, but... I mean, I did enjoy Doctor Sleep. To be fair, I need to watch them both again to get a proper thing. Because I think Doctor Sleep, obviously, isn't in, in the established universe at that point. Mm. Oh, Joker, this is almost like a new universe. Self-contained. Self-contained, yeah. yeah. Um, but they're both great movies, I recommend them. Yeah. But today's today's topic at hand is um, Neurocam. Yep. Now, I don't think anyone listening to this would have heard of it. I no. certainly hadn't until I found I it. I heard of it a couple of days ago, and then I've re- not really looked into it properly until tonight. Yeah, because... So this is, still, this is new ground for us. Because I've, I've known about it for, for about a month now, because I've seen a video... A YouTube channel called Barely Sociable. Who I'd re- if you like our podcast, I'd recommend checking him out. He's very good, and he does he does topics that are not necessarily well known because, like, you get the usual ones that we've done, like Cicada, yeah, um, and another similar stuff that are overdone a wee bit, let's say. Mm. And he goes into more obscure ones, and Eurocam is one of them. Yeah, he specifically goes after like Reddit mysteries for the most Reddit part. Reddit mysteries, yeah, but but he does he does kind of deviate sometimes. He does. Was a bit special with this one what we were about to cover tonight. Um, which is very interesting. So, Eurocam. If, if, if when you first when you first hear about or first hear the name Eurocam, you may think it's something medical. Yeah, neurology. Neurology, exactly to do with the brain, or it it it, it doesn't. What it actually is is not anything like what you'd think it would be. If that makes sense. Yeah. What, the name. What the name suggests. The name is a bit misleading. Yeah, to an extent. What you think it is, it's not. It's not. So, to the technical Neurocam, obviously we'll, we'll, go, we'll go through the whole story, story of Neurocam because it's, it's a bit different in the sense that this is more of a story rather than an actual thing. Yeah. It's a bit of both, but I would say at this point, it's definitely more of a story now. Yeah, once you, once you, once you, once you unfold it. Once you go down the rabbit hole, as yeah. we speak, a bit meta there, and much will become a few in this. Oh, yeah. Um. Once you're doing the rap, hole, you you understand what we mean, and mm-hmm. um, so we'll start from the beginning, like all like all stories. So based on your cam, it was in um, Australia, I believe. Yeah, it was this billboard that kind of cropped out of nowhere in a pretty, a pretty good place. A place would get a lot of attraction, a lot of visual yeah. um, eyes on it, and especially with the color because it's bright red. It's bright red and very simplistic in its nature. It's not got like loads of stuff that pits people off. It's very simplistic. It makes a big red billboard that says, get out of your mind, mm-hmm. www. Yep. Com, com. And to me, at first glance, it looks almost like a movie promotion. Because movie promotion, really, it doesn't promote much. It doesn't it's promote very much. vague what it's actually it's saying. But to me, if I saw that, I, I would get the feeling of like, it's 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 something to do with the film. Like, it's, that's the slogan for the film, like, so, like, 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 if it was a film poster though there would definitely be a visual component to it but there's nothing yeah. it's just words it's just words it looks more like a pyramid scheme when you look at it yeah which it's like it's trying to sell you something yeah which is actually a good segue into it because if you actually wait on the website yeah but I've got to mention this is back in 2004 yeah this was 2004 this this billboard so appeared so internet times this is centuries ago a centuries ago it's before Facebook before yeah before anything before really social made, media before social media really. became a thing uh, before YouTube, before all that, all that nonsense. Um, so if you go went into the website, it didn't give you much. It basically told you what it what, what it isn't, what it isn't, and what you said there was, uh, it's not a pyramid scheme. It's not it's trying to dismiss all the like, generalities that people would associate uh, exactly. with a sign like this. And there was loads of them. Like, I don't know, it's, I... it's not a cult. It's not a dating site. It's not not a pyramid scheme. It's not. A f- that. Well, here it is. Here's some of the here. Neurocam is not a pyramid scheme. It's not a product. It's not a service. It's not an internet dating website. It's not a new technology. It's not a marketing campaign. The list goes on. I mean, there's about yeah. at least 30 here. So it's trying to stand out because obviously a lot of like like pyramid schemes and scammers will be using this kind of language. Yeah. So when you go onto the website, you're thinking it's trying to just knock off all the stereotypes yeah. and it's going to be associated with it. To yeah. really make that you doesn't really help because if you went through all these, you'd still, you couldn't really come to a conclusion. Like, and what no, is it then? There's no, there's no. If anything, it makes it harder to think what it is. That makes you yeah. more inclined to like join in though. 
Exactly. That's what the, I think that's what the purpose is because as of once you check the billboard, you see the website and it's asking you recruit. You're not being told what you're being recruited for exactly. Exactly. So it says, uh, Sean of Dark, so yeah, you, I don't know what, tell you what that is, like you said, where it took you as an option to re- register for it, for this Nurecam, whatever, whatever it is. There was only three things you had to fill out. Your full name, date of birth, and preferred operative name. Your alias. Your alias yeah. to speak. So if your name, say my name was, my name's, my name's Matthew, right? My date of birth and my operative name could be, I don't know, Candy Bar, for example, right? Candy Bar. I don't know, that's the first thing I thought okay. of. Um, a year could be Aaron. Your date Azo. Of, or Azo. I'll be my alias. Which isn't a very good alias. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you could be, I'm Candy Bar, and you can be, I don't know. Headphones. Headphones. <laughs> I just looked over, there's headphones, headphones right yeah. there. <laughs> Candy Bar and headphones. Um, and then your city and country of residence. Now, I think this is interesting because, as far as I'm aware, this billboard was only in Australia. Yeah, I didn't, didn't say where if it was anywhere else. That was the only one it focused Exactly. So if it says just sitting country residence, that's it. Once we go further into this, you will un- I think you will get, understand why it is only one location. You understand why it's only one location, but at the same time, if it's got that option where you're sitting country residence, makes people think, hold oh, on, this could be a worldwide thing or at least a, yeah. niche, a nationwide thing. It gives it more credibility then if yeah. you think, oh, well, if it's in other places, it must be an established like uh, like network. Which later on, like it's I say... Not just- it's not just like one random weirdo advertising stuff. That's what the initial thought would yeah, be. Yeah, because exactly. you've seen it from other cities. Because it makes it seem bigger than bigger it, than it is. It is because slight spoiler. If I know, I just I will I'll just go through it. Okay. So then um, you sign up to it, and you get an email back, basically saying, um, from the the, the CEO Bridget Fisher, yep. saying, thank you for. Sign up basically, um, and we'll get back to you. Mm. Um, and obviously the 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 phrase preferred operative name again it is curious because go go and jump back and get that makes it again think it's a bit of a not sh- I'm sh- not a shady organisation maybe a shady organisation but something secretive suspicious suspicious but at the same time if it's suspicious secretive and it's also given the vibe that is. Worldwide, like we touched yeah. on, that makes you think maybe it's not so shady if it is worldwide, it's the operative name. Is yeah. it a I don't know, it was weird. Still creates suspicion, though, because yeah. when it, when, especially when you don't even know what this thing is and what it wants, and it's asking you to ha- have a different name, you must think, like, yeah. what is it, what's it wanting from me? Yeah. You know, you still don't know what what it will do for you, but it certainly wants a lot from you. Exactly. You know, there's a lot to, there's a bit to invest here for something that you don't even know exactly. what Exactly, so you're, you're signing up for this whatever it is, company, whatever it is, without much knowledge about it. But at the same time, you're thinking, well, there's no really harm in it, because all you're given is, you could, at the end of the day, there's no th- system in place to say, oh, this is your date of birth. You could lie. You could say, my name is, yes. I don't know, Andrew, I'm 19, and I'm from Finland, you know? Yeah, you know, like, you could, to validate you know, to validate it. it. So there's not, if you are smart enough, there wouldn't be any risk if you put your real details. There could be some element of risk there. Yeah. But basically, I'm reading through a blog post here, which basically goes through the the story of it in yeah, a sense. It's a person's experience. It's person's experience of, of this, um, which was posted 2013. So quite a number of years ahead. Uh, after obviously, that. obviously, he done it when it was still being. He done it when it was still being advertised. Advertised, but this blog post was posted many years later. This is recap. This is recap. So here's the here's the email we got back when he first um he first signed up. Mm. Um, dear applicant, thank you for expressing interest in Eurocam. Your application um, has been forwarded to a designated officer within the Human Resources Security Division so that our organisation can further evaluate your sustainable suitability sorry, for recruitment. In the interest of facilitating an ex- expedient assessment, the Human Resources Security Division is currently implementing a series of background checks. We apologise in advance for the potentially intrusive nature of these checks and assure you that Neurocam International only undertakes this course of action in the interest of protecting our proprietary operational procedures. Any information gathered from this historical violation will be treated as strictly confidential. If your application is successful, you'll be contacted by Mr. by Mr. Charles Hastings, head of Neurocam International's operations division. Mr. Hastings will further inform you about the nature of the tasks Neurocam requires you to complete. 
an unsuccessful application result in the cessation. Is that what it says? Succession. Succession. No, C E S S A T I O N. Session. Anyway, of all further correspondence between Eurocam and yourself, Eurocam appreciates that in eighty three point six percent of instances, you applicants experience a desire to inquire about many issues, which may further enlighten them as to the true nature of Eurocam. Due to the due to the need to maintain a high level of operational security, Eurocam is unable to provide much of the information desired by entry level participants. Thank you once again for expressing interest in Eurocam. I hope that your application will be successful and I will soon have the pleasure of working with you. Regards, Maxwell Knight, Head, Human Resource Security Division, Eurocam International, Maxwell dot night at Eurocam dot com. So I think first of all you'd get an odd you'd get a email from Bridget Fisher if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Then you got that email? Yeah. Or maybe that no, does the Bridge Official one come? No, out? I got mixed up. The Bridge Official one was on the website. Yeah. Um. Then when you signed up, you get this email from, uh, this this um this character, Maxwell Knight. Yeah. So there was a lot to take in there, a lot of a lot of jargon, I think. But I think yeah. the main part to take away from was, um, it wasn't an automated email back. It looked like it was. Real a real person. There's already a couple of names starting to come out now. So There's a couple of names. So we've got Bridget Fisher, who's the CEO. Yeah. And then we've got Maxwell Knight, head of HR, basically. Yeah. And there's like a lot of eight point six, a lot of jargon there. But let's say the main thing to take away was a new name and that uh, you still don't know what you've applied for. Yeah. So that again, either makes you a bit scared, like okay, they're still not letting me know what's going on here, or it gets you more intrigued, more intrigued to, to dig in. To dig in. So the blog post kind of goes on to say suitability for recruitment, background checks. Starting to kind of freak out, let's they're doing background checks and that. Yeah. Um, suitability for what? You know, like what, 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 what's going on here? Is this something? Is it almost like a cicada type thing where it's just people have are um, they looking for certain people? Looking for they, certain people, or are they looking for anybody? And what are they wanting them for? Or is it just a social experiment to see how many people would sign up to a random thing without? The, no the the email just raises more questions than answers. It does, uh, and then also there was the the question was it just an ARG? Which back then, back to two thousand and four, like we said, ARGs are really a more internet thing. Yeah. And if this wasn't ARG, it'd be one of the first anyway, or one of the one of the earlier ones, or one of the bigger earlier bigger ones anyway. Yeah, because I think around that time ARGs were starting to like be experimented on. Because I remember Halo Two done one. Yeah, because it actually mentions that in this blog post. Yeah. Um, Halo Two done one. They released their game. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, what's uh, what's the film? I never Clover Cloverfield. Was, that's what I said. Yeah, Cloverfield, Cloverfield done, done one. one yeah. Um, obviously not to the extent of the what like um, Marble Hornets or whatever. Or, like, yeah, that's um, Slender Man. Marble Hornets is a whole series, like yeah, a whole universe in a sense. Exactly, but um, people theorize it was an ARG. Yeah, from that that point, but um, I think then after this. It, Almost a week later from that initial email, he got another one, which read, Dear applicant, right, bear with me, dear listeners, this might take a wee minute to go through, but trust me, it's all important. Um, so, dear applicant, to continue with Eurocam's application process, all applicants, which is in, um, in capitals here, are required to complete the following perception-based asset assessment an assessment of the applicant's suitability for operational deployment we made following the fulfillment of these non-negotiable prerequisites so we're starting to stamp a bit of authority there i think and mm. uh, so then how it says applicant perception assessment nci-2001-01 um a mission assess assesses applicants perception abilities b execution Write a detailed account of everything that happens between 4 and 9 p.m. on date with health for security reasons. Pay particular attention to any occurrence which may be deemed, in quotes, out of the ordinary. Include in your account two images that represent the best and worst worst things that happened on date with health for security reasons. Two, submit this report via email to operations at neurocamp.com by close of business date with health for security reasons for security reasons uh part c operational security not applicable not applicable not applicable um 
Part D guidelines. As with all Neurochem assignments, you'll be assessed on the manner in which you complete this assignment. Intelligence and creativity are traits highly valued, valued by Neurochem, and the demonstration of both of these will expedite your further advancement within the organisation. Your application and aptitude in this assignment will be the basis for consideration for operational integration. Ends applicant perception assessment NCI slash 2001 regards Charles Hastings. Remember, mentioned that name earlier. Uh-huh. Um, head operations division, Eurocam International operations at Eurocam.com. So there's a lot to, to take in there. So we'll, we'll just we'll just. This talk. is just a very highly bureaucratic. Yeah, <laughs> apparently so. Process, so yeah. to summarise so far, billboard mm-hmm. went into that website. It told you what it wasn't. There was a registration thing. You put your email, your name, date of birth, and what you want your alias to be. Yeah. Then you get an email back saying, essentially saying it's been acknowledged. We can't tell you what it is at the moment, but if you are successful, you get an email back from this trial assistance. This applicant who were reading the blog post about obviously did. Mm-hmm. And it basically says the main part to take away there was on whatever date it was, between that five hour period, you need to document what happened. So, again, not many answers. Yeah. It raises more questions, but you are getting. It's, it's like very t- temptingly leading you in. Mm-hmm. But, I still, so it's, but at this point, you still want to be on your guard. So, I'll be on your guard because now it's saying you need to know stuff that happens. So, in your head, yeah. you're thinking something's going to happen here. Mm-hmm. Spoiler alert, nothing did happen. So, the guy, I will just jump ahead quickly. Um, so, the guy. We had to do a task. We had to do a task, basically. Yeah, write down what happened between those hours. Yeah. Um, he said he was on the, the tube home or the, the whatever it was, home, train home. And he, he was not not paranoid as such, but he was second guessing everything. Mm. And he was saying, oh, other people staring at me. Are they, am I staring at him? He was looking for like, security cameras. He was, he was looking for security cameras, looking for basically signs. And after that, nine, uh, he says he got home. Made some dinner, watched some telly, and then the time was up. Mm-hmm. And he said, Nothing, I've not happened. Yeah. He said he had a steak or something. Yeah, even checked the TV. Even checked the TV as well, yeah. They were making any kind of like, like movements that way to see if they were going to signal. Which yeah, is a bit far fetched. I mean, how can they know what channel you're going to be watching? It was going to be on TV. That would be a, like, a huge confirmation, though, that it was worldwide. Yeah. And it was like some like, with, like huge, powerful influence that was taken over, but obviously that didn't happen. That would be really freaky yeah. if that did happen, though. Your 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 recruiter yeah. was on the TV. Because, but uh, you could look at it this way: it's like nothing was going to happen, but it just makes you. It's trying to make you more perceptive of the world. Which I think it's a good thing because if you want, to, you want to, by scaring yeah. the show, yeah. Well, scare tactics can work. Oh well, Matt. Because you can like make you look around you, see the world in a new way, like question everything. Question. You'd be a great cult leader. Yeah, I would be. <laughs> Mighty tease cult. Yeah. Um. But not, I'm not saying question everything in a bad way, it just makes you, your perception, like, better, I think, it makes you more aware of stuff, like, for example, if, I don't know, like, you see a guy with a gun, you can notice that, and, like, quickly, or even smaller things, like, um, I don't know, if someone's in trouble, you can notice that, or... Well, next time, if I want people to be more aware, I'll just keep pulling a gun at them to get yeah. more active. Or, like, not even, like, for example, I, 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 I'm using that as an extreme example, like, a guy might have a gun in his, his pocket, for whatever reason, and you notice that because you're more perceptive. That, that's obviously a very, I'm, very. I'm sure most people would react pretty quickly to a situation. But like if you're not, if you, I don't. What I'm you saying is, if you're, stopped, if you're so not really... like, um, if you're like on your phone, you're not really looking about. But if this, you're more perceptive, you'd be looking about. And you would see that. Yeah. But Again, I'm, I'm probably I'm being very far fetched here, but yeah, I feel like, and I also feel like there's more humane ways to get people more perceptive of, yeah. of their surroundings. But um, so the guy goes on um, and writes down what happened. Yeah. I, mean, also, I, I think I did mention mm. it, the 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 people wanted them. I think I did actually the best and worst thing that happened that day. It was in the, the document process. Yeah, so had to write down. Um, he got back to them saying what happened. Nothing like the ordinary. It says the best thing that happened was cooking his nice steak, mm. and the worst thing was the dishes afterwards. Yeah, and he was saying he was laughing at the fact that he sent this back to Eurocam and some poor Eurocam employee had to read about his dull day. Oh yeah, or they probably just skimmed most of it. Exactly, or he's laughing at the fact that um, oh, like thousands of applicants have 
centre boring days and like all these people, these Eureka employees had to read thousands of boring days. Yeah. I was thinking, oh, they're not gonna they're not gonna get back to me that I'm gonna fail because yeah. it was so, so boring. Yeah, because you're not getting any response on your your first thought is either it's not real, you were just pulled into some weird prank, or you feel like failed the, the process. The but obviously reading this blog post, so yeah, you did obviously there's a bit more to it. Um they got back to him pretty much um well, in fact in between that period um after he sent that email back to him he, he started he went to research neurocam mm. but he there was no internet trace of them there was no footprint nothing no nothing um which he thought because he came across quite a big company from the emails and the billboard which i don't know if i mentioned the billboard um in that area um at that time was a cost about ten thousand ten thousand dollars you uh Australian dollars, yeah. So, which even back then is quite a lot. That's not accounted for yeah. inflation. That's still quite a lot back then. So he's always thinking this is some sort of big company, um. But there's no internet trace of them, which he found found a bit, a bit um suspicious to say the least. Mm. Um, even like even back then, like two thousand four, like internet was still a pretty big thing back then. And you would think there not, would be not compared to not compared to now, what but we have now. I and mean, try to trace stuff back then again was not as just not as adequate. Yeah, but there was a reason. Obviously, I don't want to ruin it, but yeah. So they did get back to him um, after he'd done his assignment or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, his task. So the email he got back was, "Dear applicant, to conclude Neurocamp's application process." Again in brackets, all a- eh, not brackets, capital letters. All applicants are required to complete the following assignment: assignment Eurocam identifier, covert delivery, NCI slash three thousand, um, three thousand and one sorry, uh, slash O two, section A mission, the successful covert and secure collection of a standard standardized Eurocam identifier. Um, section B execution. The secure transfer will be executed as follows. Deviation for, from operational protocol as outlined will result in instant termination of your involvement with Eurocam. Um so here's his here's his task you had to do basically. And um, part one, travel to the secure location no, I'll start that again. Travel to the secure transfer location, um in brackets refer to the map provided. So obviously with that email we got a map. Yeah. Um part two, at this location, carefully camouflaged. There is an electronic safe. Use the map, your map provided to locate that safe. Um, part three, carefully remove the camouflage. Now, for some reason, it skips part four. Now, I don't know if this was a, a typo by the blogger or by the... or was intentional by the whoever sent the email. But for, obviously, we know the conclusion. I think it was just a typo or something. Must be. Because, like, that... What, what other reason would that would it be? Yeah, because that skipping number four. from three to five uh, has no relevance, and like I say, we know what happens in the end of all this. It it has no relevance. I think yeah. it's I think it's just a typo or something. So, uh, part five or four, whatever. Um, enter code one five nine A, and open the safe. Part six. Take only the package with your operative ID written on it. Um, part seven. Resecure the safe. Part eight. Replace camouflage in such a way to ensure that Eurocam's property remains unable to be easily located by non Eurocam personnel. Part 9, vacate the area. Part 10, once in a secure location, open the package. Um, part C, timeline. This assignment will be, must be successfully completed by date withheld for security reasons. Part D, operational security. So this is the last part here. Um, so bear with me. The operations division appreciates that attendance at a remote location locale based primar- primarily on correspondence and data gathered via telecommunications is known to raise risk profile issues with respect to standard urban environment factors. To address potential concerns of operational personnel in this instance, permission is granted to invite a person of your choice to accompany you while executing this mission. Your judgment in this case is being trusted and of course judged. Should you elect to do so, choose a companion that can be trusted not to disclose to any other party in your terms operational protocol and proprietary industrial practices. Please be aware that for the purpose of additional security and quality control, you may be monitored throughout the completion of this assignment. 
Neurocam International is aware that many operatives are tempted to publicly discuss and relate their Neurocam experiences via online forums, web journals and the media. Operatives are strictly not permitted to disclose the details of operational assignments under any circumstances. Any operatives in breach of this protocol will be immediately terminated. Regards, Charles Hastings, Head Operations Division, Asia Pacific Quadrant, Neurocam International, operations at neurocam.com. And then closed in this blog post as well, it shows you the map, mm-hmm. um, which is really important in the grand scheme of things, but it's quite good. So from that, we can gather that it's trying to ramp up now. What you yeah, it's do. transitioning from uh, just words to now physical action. Mm-hmm. Exactly, it's all just nice and safe. Find the computer screen. Now it's asking them to do. Now you, you have to really get in the trust that they won't do anything weird. Because if, like, if a random like group that you just found started telling you to do things, to go outside and gather, well, at this in this instance, an envelope, yeah, would you do it? Um, no. No, yeah. Because, like, again... You'd have to, you'd, you either have, like, no time in your hands at all and just, like, do it for yeah. the sake of it, or... They're trying to get you to do something illegal. Yeah. They've put on this big quiver, whatever criminals are. They've put on this big facade of, oh, this company, blah, blah, blah. You can't really tell us... We can't really tell you what we're doing, blah, blah, blah. Do this for us. Yeah. Do this illegal thing, whatever. Us. We won't tell you anything about us, but can you please do this thing for us in the middle of nowhere, carrying exactly. this envelope? You know, like... What's the chance that it could be like a serial killer or something? Exactly. Just claiming victims, that could be a thing. Exactly. Um, so but at the people... same time, it's a carrot dangling there because it could be real. Yeah. Um, which it kind of obviously turns out to be real because yeah. we're reading this. We've got this episode, obviously. I imagine that was a turning point for a lot of people. Like, yeah. how much trust are you now willing to invest to actually go and do something physically out of your own comfort zone? Exactly. For this, for whatever goal you're achieving, you're wanting from this group, mm-hmm. you know? So it's it is, it is shady. Yeah. Um but in the in the blog post oh. he he dedicates like um the whole process because he shows photos and pictures yeah. of it. So it definitely is a real thing. It is a real thing. Yeah. But one thing I would say, um obviously this was back in two thousand four. The pictures look really HD and good for two thousand and four. It depends on it depends on the equipment he used and what he used to like you know document like, it, this process the this person is documenting it. Yeah. Um it's really good picture for 2004, I'm just, 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 just saying. So he, he documents where he had to go. It's a wee, well, it looks quite a quiet place. And hidden in the grass is the, yeah. the safe. Yeah. Which is um, by, what's it called? The fake wooden chip things. You see, yeah. you see them in like... Uh, you see them in gardens. You see them in the gardens and like public yeah. like, parts. Like, if you're Scottish, Mugged Up Park, you see them. Yeah. Like in, in where the swings are now, you see them there. Yeah. Oh yeah, and, and we play parks. And yeah, that, we play parks. So you, isn't that not important? But it's yeah, just so he was talking about how he almost actually gave up until he noticed he couldn't the find it. Yeah, being like a weird pattern, like as if somebody just planted it there yeah. for one spot and then he uncovered it, and there actually was a safe. So he uncovered the safe, put in the, the code, mm-hmm. and he also mentions that the safe, and you can tell by the picture as well here, which obviously you just can't see. It just looks like a quite advanced safe, like yeah. a. It would cost a bit of money to, to have one of these. Yeah, it's not like you're it's like, not like a, a, typical a typical safe, safe. you can you just buy it at the shop or something. Exactly, actually. or just a key. It's like quite high tech. It actually looks like one of the safes you find in hotels. Yeah. It does. Know, those, those those rectangular metal ones that people it's use. It's a bit more advanced. Yeah. You just got like a keypad and all that. And, um, but yeah, anyway, he opens at the safe and you can actually, on the picture here, you can actually see the Neurocam logo and it looks like it goes quite deep into the ground. Mm. And there's quite a few um, envelopes with different different operative names, different operative numbers names. or whatever they use. And the guy said he was tempted to to open um, someone else's, but he didn't. I'd imagine they'd all say the same thing anyway. Yeah. I, I, I imagine so because if, if he, for example, if he did open both of them, uh, two of them that was the same thing, that would kind of give the jig up that it was a hoax or whatever. Or they're just telling people the same message. Exactly. But anyway, he didn't take anyone else. He took his own, and they took it to. A secure location, like he was told to, and in his, in, in his judgment, he thought his um, car was a, a safe place. Mm-hmm. So he opened it up, and so I'll, I'll tell you some of the operative. I don't know what his operative name was. It's not really important, but they said intriguing names like Tulips, Midnight, and El Ho El Horhana. El Horhana. Does that look right to you? 
Ilharhana. Ilharhana. Anyway, that was some of their operative names. Um, so you opened it up, the envelope, and it contained a typed letter on Eurocam letterhead, signed personally by Eurocam's mysterious CEO, Bridget Fisher, which we touched on earlier, yeah. along with a small orange badge with a strange logo resembling an all-seeing eye on it, which is quite common for um, these, you know, these Illuminati-type Illuminati yeah. cult things. Now, I'll read what this um, this letter said. Um, again, it is quite long, so bear with me, but it is all part of the story here. It's all part of the plan. It's all part of the plan. So I read the letter. Dear Operative, may my failed for privacy purposes. Welcome to Neurocam. I am pleased to advise that I hereby offer you a position within Eurocamp International. Your perception assignment report was evaluated in accordance with a predetermined assessment criteria. Eurocamp's human resources and security division found that your report demonstrated a minimum of seven of the ten qualities desired by Eurocamp International. Now, this isn't part of the email, but what those ten qualities were, we never find out. I was about to say, we never, we never actually know what they actually We never find out. I, I'm assuming it's arbitrary. Yeah. Again, once at the end, you understand why you, yeah. you don't see these qualities. Mm -hmm. But um, I guess it's just like if it, the qualities were there, it'd be like um, I don't know determination or um, willingness, willingness, whatever you know, creativity, creativity, intelligence, stuff like that. all the all the usual like app job application stuff. Yeah. Like this. Um, so this goes on to say this rating determines that you would be an appropriate candidate for operational deployment. Neurocam International hopes that you will accept this offer and this will, this act will mark the beginning of a sustained mutual beneficial association with our organisation. Upon acceptance of our offer, you will immediately receive accreditation for ongoing operational deployment, a, priv a privilege achieved by less than 26% of applicants, which is making this applicant obviously feel quite special. Yeah. Um, your operational deployment will be effective immediately. The details of your first assignment must remain confidential until such a time as the operations division contacts you. Be aware that the date of your first assignment will be determined by a vari via variety of factors, including, but not limited to, your current location, your age, and the state of any current Eurocam operations within your area. Although your deployment is effective immediately, Neurocamp cannot guarantee the exact date upon which you will receive your first assignment. Being part of Neurocamp is a responsibility we expect you to take very seriously. Neurocamp International highly prizes its strong corporate image and reputation, and your continued involvement with us is conditional upon the demonstration of a public manner, which will in no way reflect poorly upon their organisation. And before I read on with the email, I think it's interesting to take, um, it says, a strong corporate image and reputation seriously but then but let me touch on before that guy found no trace of them online yeah so that's a bit shady to me there so they're they want to take their image seriously they have they feel like they have like a very high brand to hold but yet when you look them up there's nothing there's nothing i know um Unless that, that just further proves they want to be even more secretive yeah I and they, they have said if any like violent acts happens on the receivers per half then per on behalf, I mean, they will terminate their whole process, exactly. application process. So they're basically, I think that just means they just want to be secretive as possible because they want to keep a tight brand. Exactly. Um. So I'll continue. Um. Where was I? Do -do -do -do. Uh. There we go. So conduct contrary to this condition, such as there, and you touched on there, such as over aggression, physical yeah. violence, or any similar potentially embarrassing or destructive behaviour displayed during the completion of assignments will result in the immediate termination of your involvement with the organisation. And it concludes, congratulations on completing your CAM's application process. I take great pleasure in being the first to welcome you to the NeuroCAM team. Regards, Bridget Fisher, CEO, NeuroCAM International, and it just has a kind of generic email, bridget.fisher at neurocam.com. So that's Bridget Fisher appearing again. Exactly. So we've had Bridget Fisher, the CEO, uh, Charles Hastings, was that his name? Yeah, uh, HR guy. No, that was that was Maxwell, wasn't it? Maxwell Knight. Wasn't Maxwell it? Knight. Who was it? Charles Hastings? Was the head of operations? Yeah. Um, in Asia Pacific Quadrant, which um is where Australia is, isn't it? Was it? Asia Pacific. That's where Australia is. I'm assuming so. So, that's the end of the part one of the 
of this um of this blog post. Um, so this guy at the end of this part one of the blog ends up becoming a part of Neurocam. Yep. But he doesn't actually know what Neurocam is. Um, <laughs> so if you want to sum that, Rose, and I'll just try and get the part two up here. Summarise the whole... Summarise this part one while well, I get part two up for you. Well, part one, this is essentially what um, the entire recruitment process is for Neurocam on on the receiving end. But it's a totally one-sided mm-hmm. in the sense of, you know what the uh, the recruit the recruitee... So you know the... So, yeah, you, so this is what... So basically, the part, part one of that blog post basically done it from an applicant's point of view yeah. until they got um until they actually got recruited by them. But we still and don't know the recruiters. Don't know the recruiters. So before we can uh, go on to And we still don't know what they actually want from people. Yeah exactly. We don't know what we want people all we know is they've done that secret task which when you think about it isn't too elaborate, it's basically go to the location, pick up this package and you're in. Yeah. Um, so what, what what's, we have, what's, what's with the weird process exactly. you know, of all this what we haven't actually touched on yet what, before we go back to this person's blog post and we continue the story if you will yeah. one thing we haven't touched on was there was actually a video of Neurocam uh-huh. which I'll actually get up just now for you um, I'll play a wee bit of it obviously you can't see it but it's a uh, it's almost like the first one I'm going to show is Basically, well, there's a couple of videos. There's two videos. Yeah. One. There's one. That's one, the, which was um. This is the advertisement for the advertisement the for Eurocam. Yeah. You know. Um. A second one was basically a documentary about Eurocam. Documentary, as in yeah. quotation marks. So I'll just play a bit of the the from Eurocam's point of view, if you will. So basically, just because what is Eurocam? I found out about Neurocam in late 2004 uh, via a site by the name of Metafilter. It was late December 2004 from an alternate gaming reality website. I first heard about Neurocam from a post on Metafilter. I stumbled on a Neurocam while I was doing research as part of an alternate reality game. I first came across Neurocam when I was traveling to and from work and there was a billboard just down the road which said Neurocam and had a website on it. I first found out about Neurocam of time. I am Operative, I work here. My name is Operative Kim. Hello, I'm Operative Bunny. My Operative name is Operative Pale Figure. This is Operative Ola. My name is Operative Hawthorne. My Operative name is Citizen Proculus. Great to meet you. Ah. Neurocam creates some of those random circumstances in my ordinary day-to-day life. Because I've always really felt that it's had something more to it. The type of thing. So that's the week, can I taste it? It's like everyone's own individual story, how they found it, what their options are, yeah. what it changed about them, and all that kind of it's stuff. But again, it doesn't actually tell you anything about the company. Nothing about what it actually does, just about mm-hmm. everything except in the middle. Yeah. The beginning and the end. One thing I will. It's like every other corporate like group yeah. about wanting to change people's lives in a way. Yeah. Um, so, I know what I had. A lot of them have the. Uh, uh, can I. It's like a phantom of the opera mask. A phantom of the opera mask. Yeah, it's, and, really, it's a white mask that covers half, the top half of their face. And But one thing I would find very suspicious is when they're all talking about it, they're all in normal backgrounds at like their house or... Yeah. Their, which just, that makes it more personal, though. It makes it more personal, but it's stressed to me. It looks a bit more homemade. Yeah, which mm. is the key word, I think. Yeah, it makes rather than like... Rather than like some sort of... As if they work for some sort of big secret company, it's just like a, almost a homemade film. Yeah. Um, Which, keep that in mind, by the way. I'm not going to spoil anything just now, but yeah. So part two of this, we'll go back to part two of this um this guy's blog post. So basically he goes on to describe his life with Neurocam. So he's the first week of my I'm not gonna read obviously the whole blog post up here all day, but I'll yeah. just read key parts of it. So basically, the first week of my life as an official member of Neurocam passed uneventfully, uh, unsurprisingly, in spite of my mind racing with all the far fetched possibilities this might entail. Um I have been informed that my operation department would be effective immediately. He was ready for action. Um, so <laughs> one thing that comes to mind is this guy actually have a proper job? Or... I don't know. <laughs> the, yeah. well, with groups like that, that's what they kind of target with people who have yeah. really nowhere else to go. Yeah, just kind of looking for something to fill their life with. Fill their, uh, yeah, fill their void. Um, 
So, skip ahead. Recent events had convinced me that Neurocam had some money, subst- substance, and organization behind him that could not easily be dismissed. And the way Neurocam had already changed my life, it forced me to con- consider an oh, to get a different way of looking at my reality and then logic to find everything within it. So that's what I was saying earlier. It like it, it forced you to look at like a per- perceive everyday life differently. Mm-hmm. Like you're always looking not paranoia in a way like major you're always just keeping an open eye and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Wish. I don't think it's a bad thing. But you don't like, you don't want to be a zombie on your phone all day and just go going a bit like what you be looking a bit perspective in that. Yeah, but as I said, there's more humane ways of, yeah. less weird ways of doing that. Yeah. Uh, so we'll jump ahead here to the um, the blog post. So it says a few days later, uh, so basically it's a week and a few days later, I think. I've skipped ahead. Um, but basically, this is pretty gets his first assignment. Mm. So he says, um, new kind of assignment, a uh, bunch of, Number CI for whatever. Uh, critical information Korean phase one receipt. Um. Okay, this is gonna. This is a quite a big email from Eurocam. But be with me, um, dear dear listeners. Uh, part A mission: the security the secure receipt of an object that contains an object of vital importance to Eurocam International's commute operations in the Asia Pacific quadrant. Um. Part B. Execution. Below are the procedure details for this assignment. The end deviation from the operation protocol is trade will result in the requirement of disciplinary action against Obitov. So at precisely at 3 pm on uh, date withheld, uh, proceed to the corner of Collins Street and Spencer Street where you find a public phone box. If the phone box is occupied, wait until it's vacant. Approach the phone box and pretend that you are making a call. Discreetly reach under the right hand side of the outer shell and locate a small card that will be taped to the underside. This will be the access card for a locker located at Southern Cross Station. You'll have until half three to locate this locker, making sure you're not being followed. Approach the locker and set the card and remove the contents. Leave the area immediately once the contents are in your possession and deposit them at the secure location of your choosing. You'll be contacted. You will then be contacted. Um, with further instructions. Um, part C, operatives are strictly forbidden from revealing any details to the assignment. Any operative found on will suffer immediate expulsion from Eurocam. Eurocam rejects accountability for any potential detrimental consequences arriving from the operative's assignment. So essentially, the saying if you end the assignment, you get hurt or whatever, it's not their fault. Not their responsibility. Yeah. Um, part D, timeline, please be aware that the contents of the object are of utmost importance to our organisation and thus the most expedient possible completion of the assignment would be appreciated. The guards, Charles Hastings. So, um, I think, what well, I'm sort of this, 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 that, this wee bit, I think we'll skip ahead a bit. So, that was like a, he took some pictures here as well mm-hmm. of the, the phone box, um, a wee card that has a number saying Eurocam, basically just documenting his, um, that task he had to do. Yeah. And this is the type of tasks that he had to do throughout his time in Eurocam. Um, but I'll skip ahead now because this blog post is kind of. Uh, I didn't really give us any answers here. Just kind of get has him doing different similar tasks and that, but it doesn't get to get us to the answer of what is Eurocam. So we fast forward to two thousand and eleven. I yes, think. Yeah. There's a. There's a. There's a. Um, Trailer for this, for this um, documentary on Eurocam, which we touched on briefly before. It's called WTF is Neurocam. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Um, see if I can see if it is on YouTube. But the documentary itself has not been released. It's not been it's released. Only, it's only, only this fo- trailer. Only the footage is the trailer. But what is interesting is it's on I, I D well, I am DB. I'm DB. Yeah. It's got, um, re- directed by Robin Henley. Mm-hmm. Or he- he- Robin Henley. Robin Henley. Robin yeah. Henley. Robin Henley. Robin Henley. Like direct- yeah. He's a director and writer. Then it has starring a few random people. Yeah. Um, let's see if I can find this trailer. Is this it? I think on the Neurocam channel, it's called Neurocam Expose. <laughs> 
So the editing is quite good here. I'll skip ahead. So this is basically some Eurocamp optimes, I presume. Yeah. Basically saying. Talking about Robin Henley. Mm -hmm. uh, Robert Henley promptly emailed me back saying he'd seen the, the graffiti that I'd put up on the board and that I was almost right, but not quite. So Robin Henley's the guy trying to look into Expose, expose uh, Neurocam yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. in case there's any confusion there. As an international organisation of unknown origins, it's known to have been around for at least 30 years. So it's been around for 30 years, blah, blah, blah. That's what they say. They chose to do something uh, untoward towards me. I had very little... And it, oh, it, go, it documents Robin Henley doing certain tasks in yes. Eurocam. Tasks like um, interviewing people, going after people, sneaking up, like yeah. hidden so cameras, basically, like uh, he, flying the wall documentary. In terms of this yeah. documentary, Robin Henley has joined Eurocam, but he's, without them knowing, he's trickly, secretly trying to yeah, expose them. Yeah, internally spy on them, essentially. Exactly. Get more info. But, this, like you say, this documentary was never released. Yeah, and when you watch the trailer... As someone who's like studied film, probably you can tell that it's a bit staged. Yeah, no one like all the acting when he stalks people and they get angry it comes off as very just forceful. Um, the way he's edited, it's really quick paced. It's, it's very mid two thousands documentary style. Yeah, it is. Really advertise something. I think, like, I think the the, just the editing seems, is that good, but the acting that you can tell is a bit. Yeah, the editing, and, and all of it just seems too good to be true. Like it's yeah. not like not none of it's real in a sense. So that. Gives me two questions: Is the documentary fake, or is Neurocam fake? It's all, all. A big well, conclusion. both are true. Pretty much. A year later, in two thousand twelve, we finally get an answer. Yeah, and it's a very, it's a very eye-opening answer. It's very eye-opening. It's very quite. It went. It went in a direction I didn't really expect. It didn't, but at the same time, it's you have to say bravo. Yeah, well, like you. I'll let you. I let me. I will explain it. So basically, I think that's actually the first episode we've done. Our, the podcast where we actually we actually get an answer. Hundred percent solved. Hundred percent solved. Not like Cicada or um, like Madame McCann or something like that, yeah. or Jeff Epstein or this one get solved. Basically, Robin Henley is the guy behind it all. Yeah. He in two thousand twelve, a year after that supposed trailer came out, he did a thesis on it. He came up with it all. He paid for the billboard. He he was the one emailing. Oh, it's kind of complicated. So the blog post. Was also Robin Henley. Yeah. That so that Rob that blog post I was reading was written by Robin Henley. He's the one that created Neurocam, and then he done a blog post doing Neurocam from a person's point of view who so, was applicant yeah. applying for it. So not only was he the recruiter, he was also on the opposite, and he was also the applicant. Yeah. To write basically write a thesis of what their process would be. Yeah. And what their ration rational yeah. thought would be of going to do these tasks yeah. whilst also being the one creating the tasks so it's very meta it's very yeah but at the same time it's not just him involved obviously there was other people involved who had no idea what it was yeah. he had real applicants and he was actually responding Robin Henley was responding through his applicants yeah because on the on the expose trailer I yeah. think he actually interviews people about the billboard asking them what yeah. they think it but I don't know it. I don't know if they were actors it could, as well. it could probably as actors but I imagine he might mix in the odd couple yeah. like one to make it really authentic really so yeah. that's what I would do so to so it's kind of hard to summarise because it is so complicated in yeah. a way. So he, Robin Henley, created that. I don't know how he got the money for that billboard, to be fair. It may have just been got a loan or... Oh, he's got rich parents. He's got rich something. parents or something. <laughs> so, but it's something Mom, can, Mom, can I start the secret organisation? Yeah, can, can I also be the members? That's the only question here, but at the end of the day, it's not really... Who cares? Quickly, at the end of the day, he, he paid for the billboard it's somehow. It's an investment. It's an investment. He some, may, may have saved up or whatever. Because mm. I know people have saved up, like, loads of money. And it's not that hard to do, really. If you put your mind to it, because yeah. ten thousand, I imagine ten thousand back then wasn't that hard to save up to. Mm, it Maybe, depends, it depends yeah. on what well, be easier than that is today. Yeah, but anyway, that's that, that's not important. He put them on end for the billboard. That started all. Then he started emailing people back. I don't know how he managed to get different names in the emails, but I suppose you can just make you can just make tons yeah. of emails. But anyway, he's the one that created it all. He, then he done this blog post from a person's applying point of view. Yep. Then he did a thesis on it. Which apparently is very good. 
yeah, I've not read the whole thesis because when I first heard like he was behind the whole thing, I thought, oh, that was a bit of an anticlimax. But then once they explained when he wrote it for, I'm assu- well, if it's a thesis, I'm assuming it's for a university yeah. degree. It was, his, it was his PhD. PhD, yeah. And he was actually wanting to go into detail about the rational. Basically, I think he was going through the rational of like groups, yeah. secret societies, cults, and what it would be like from both ends. ARGs as well. ARGs. So he's trying to put all this into one yeah. and it came off quite well. Yeah. So that was... I'll need to read the whole thing myself and see I what... The thing is, it, 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 it took dedication. It took him, what, nearly 10 years for it all well, to Well, it started come. since 2004 and now it's only coming out... What, 2012. Yeah, so like 2012. 13. Nine years later. Yeah. And it's now it's only stuck... Like, I've not heard a lot about this. We've only discussed No, not nine this. years. I'm not talking about um, But quite a number of years later. But yeah, we only started talking about this, so... What, 2019? So obviously it didn't... I don't think... I don't think his goal was for it to take off massively and become a pure... Massive mystery. He just wanted to do his own wee social experiment almost. Yeah, a social experiment, but a social experiment that's not morally bankrupt yeah. in a sense. And if you actually look into he it. He didn't actively harm people. No, he didn't act. It wasn't malicious in any way. I'm sure he didn't take anyone's money or anything like that. It was his own money he used. Yeah, and he was, if you actually look into him as well, he's a performance artist. Oh, yeah. So he's done yeah. this type of stuff before. So, so he's used to like manipulating and deceiving people. Yeah, and... almost like a Darren Brown type of thing. Kind of, yeah, kind of like a smaller scale sort of Darren. Yeah, because he's done. If he's, I think he's, he's got a website or he got something. Thinking that thing, I think Darren Brown could do something like this on a bigger scale. Imagine he did like because he could do if, like a Netflix. Yeah, because if Darren like Brown put his mind to it, he could do something like this. Yeah, but Robert Henley's done other stuff like this, like where he tricks people or it's kind of almost like pranks, but it's a magician. Pranks have, yeah, magician in a sense, you know, it's pranks that serve a purpose in a way. Yeah. But um, it's not well done for him to put this all together. Yeah, as long as he didn't, like, obviously didn't rip anyone off or... No, because like, I don't think anyone. he took money off anyone. Yeah. Well, money he put in. All the only did, money involved was the billboard. The worst he did was just weird people out for a bit. Exactly. You know? And he's also testing people's trust and, like, going to this secure location. Like. Yeah, because you can write about how, like, what, what, what we were talking about earlier in the podcast about, like, yeah. what kind of, what will be your threshold of trust yeah. with an organisation you don't know to do things for them while they're not really giving you much in return. Yeah, um, I'll see if Because there is a lot of like interesting discussions about like the whole psychology of cults. Yeah. And how people can get tricked into them or fall into them or how could they get back out of it and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So I've got the thesis up here Project Neurocam. So it's like 206 pages long. When was it posted? To the, this was, I think this is a repost, but I think okay. it was originally posted in 2012. Right. Um, so Mon, Mon, Monash, Mon, Monash University. Manash. Manash. So yeah, look up Robin Henley. He's a he's a smart guy. But this also leads into something else we've talked about. People are thinking Robin Henley is buying Cicada. Uh, people are saying that he done this before that it was a massive thing. And people are saying, what well, if he went wanted to try it? Now then it's even bigger. Wanted to do it in the internet type of thing rather than kind of because that 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 the obviously Neurocam used the internet and real life, but not to a massive extent. So people are thinking, what if he done this on a bigger extent? Yeah. yeah I, I think you don't think it's Robin Henley you think no. it's something that I think there's a chance it could be him or they've collaborated with him mm. whoever's behind Cicada or they've at the very least I think they've took inspiration from him well yeah from my point of view the only similarities I can see is that there are a secret group tasking people for their own goal yeah. but their methods their, and their intentions are just so different from each yeah, other yeah because I think and I think the general consensus is that um, Cicada's to do with um privacy privacy and um security yeah in a sense well this was just well it's, it's came out now but it's a phrase it's a phrase phd it was his own personal project yeah. passion project in a sense but with cicada there's still a lot of like mystery around it but from the from the evidence we've been given so far it seems like a a covert group as to get um to look out for intelligent people yeah they're not asking them to join anything at least initially it's more about um, finding the most, the brightest people for their yeah. own purpose. Well, this one is more just finding anybody. Yeah, I as well see, to, join. to see what they, how far they could yeah. go almost. And plus, with um, Neurocam, you had to go through all these steps. But with Cicada, it's optional. There's no forcing anybody. It was a, it was a collaborative effort. Yeah, and then they find the best of the best of the bunch. But yeah, Neurocam. Oh, and no, all the connections is just like there's not enough evidence really to say. There's not enough evidence, definite. but. I think I don't think it's out of the I don't think it's absolutely out of the realm that Robin yes. Henley is it's involved not impo- somehow. Not impossible, just very, very unlikely but from my point of I view. I think also thinking about it, he's done something like this before. Maybe he spent like a, 
a good few, I mean, more than a good few years on this, he might want to do something else, something different. Maybe. Because it wouldn't surprise me if he is doing something just now. Maybe. Uh, he might be working on something else now. Or yeah, or some sort of ARG or something. It's just a one-off and he's working professionally on something else. Yeah, because he obviously he's a, you can tell he's a smart guy and he's put a lot of thought into this. Yeah, he seems to be very... Um, was it uh, imaginative? Yeah, and what I'll do is I'll in the in the YouTube uh, video and in SoundCloud I'll link both his theses and his blog post. You should like the Neurocam videos as well. Sure, so I'll, I'll like the Neurocam videos what, as well. What the documentary trailer is meant to like, what, what, yeah. um, how it's emulating a lot of very yes, documentary so style. Editing. I'll put the three parts in it. Obviously, if you want, obviously, Roman Henley just created this world almost. Then he's put himself in that world. Mm-hmm. Then he's obviously kind of wrote about it in his thesis, like an overarching view of like his his point of view as, as the creator, people's point of view from applying on that. It's very, very interesting. Yeah. Um. So I'll link both of them and I'll oh, also read them, sorry, the, the videos, the um, video thesis and the blog post. The blog post as well. The blog post is interesting. The blog post was actually posted after he put the thesis up. Was it? Because I think this was from 2013. The, the, yeah, the, I'm um, assuming the thesis wasn't like, like a public post initially. Yeah, so this was. So he, the thesis was 2012. Then he put the blog post out. Um, a year after. Yeah. So, but it all, it all connects anyway. It gives it more. It gives it more like credibility that yeah, this is actually. So if you came across initially. the blog post first, you think this is real? Yeah. Isn't maybe come across as yeah, real? Um, his name is not on. No, the blog I, I don't know that because it's just some. Listen, I'm not. I'm face. Sure no, I would get if you. I would get the whole. Get jig away. Yeah, but uh, I think it's just some nameless. It's maybe some nameless um user. User, but it's quite funny because he's the one applying, and the emails in in the wall post are again from him. Yeah. So uh, it's quite, it's quite very meta and quite very meta. Yeah, but um, it's like it's either someone posting for a thesis or someone who's just got too much time in their hands and yeah, creating all these characters, creating all these characters and that, yeah. <laughs> like Charles Hastings and. Uh, Bridget Fisher or whatever and that and but yeah, that that is that is Neurocam. That is Neurocam. Um, anything you want to add? I st- still don't know what Neurocam actually is. I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't <laughs> yeah, then yeah, that all the yeah. answer been real except what Neurocam actually is. Like, I'm assuming that Neurocam the isn't actually anything. That's yeah, again, it's, it's what it, a bit confusing because Neurocam is more about what it isn't rather than what it is. Yeah. Which again, that's what it said in the very start. The very start. I know. So Neurocam isn't actually anything. Yeah, if Mister uh, Healy's watching, please tell us. Yeah, please tell us. But the thing is, it's not meant to be anything. It's more about the journey and that. Yeah. Um, because you I don't know where you got the name. You again, you probably chose Neurocam because it's an intriguing yeah, name. It just sounds it's short, snappy, sounds scientific, scientific. But even though it technically is in a way because he's tried scientifically, like analyze, analyze people, in that. groups, analyze groups, ARGs, whatever. Yeah. Um. So Neurocam, we've answered the question here, but we've not. Actually, answered the question. I really answered the question. But we have no, we haven't answered the question because <laughs> it's all been. It's, this is all finally it's been all... tied in a neat bow, sort of. Yeah. Because it has been answered. We know what it is. It's this Robert Hen- Rob- Robin Henley's I'm experiment. S- I'm still going to keep an eye on it in case anything else comes out of Doubt it. because he's done his thesis and he's finished with it. But unless he wants to like troll people again and just like flip the coin in some way and yeah. keep developing it. But... Together. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Okay, no, but um. No, it wasn't an interesting wee story. It's nice for an episode to, to actually get the answer then. Conclusion. Get an conclusion. Can solve it. Um, but yeah, thank you for doing, digging in, down this rabbit hole with us. And we actually found the answer for once. Yeah. And next time we'll dig a little deeper. Bye. Yeah.